also um, the newer family members as well, the parents and stuff, because um, our partnership with the school and the family are working together at the moment. That's absolutely the best scenario for um, productive education for your child. So I'm just going to, today's going to be about telling you a wee bit about the school. Um, as you can see, at the minute, we are right in the middle of a very extensive school refurbishment. Um, you would have noticed that coming in, if you're new to the school, that the flooring with by that classroom and the ceiling, etc. are not yet completed. What I can reassure you is that we are expecting the version to be finished for August, so that when your child starts school, they will be starting in, in a school that is, there are no workmen, there are no um, containers in the playground, etc, etc, they will be gone. There might be a wee bit of snagging, maybe a few coat hooks that will be put up, maybe a wee touch of paint even then, but we're really going to be pretty much finished, which is great news. And um, at present, we are looking at two classes in one next year. Now, that's quite a large intake for us in growth. Usually we have one, maybe one and a half size of class, but this year there has been um, a particular boost in numbers that's reflected the number of the schools in the community. Um, which is why some families have, have struggled with doing their first choice of school and have put in appeals and so on to get a place in the place. So there might be some of you who are with me today who had an eye on a different school and that wasn't accepted, that you maybe um, didn't work successfully placing the place. Or there might be some of you here today that, um, that, that come along because you, you aspire to um, be, be part of all group. Um, the placing requests and the appeal process should be complete by, by June. So if anyone doesn't have any clarity on the position just now, that, that should be coming quite soon. Um, so it's always nice to be popular. Um, the school role for next year, we're looking at about 240 children. That seems massive to me because when I came nine years ago, we had just over 100. So in that time, we've increased by 140, which is a really significant increase. And it's, you know, it, it's been a change for me, certainly, although I don't miss that. When you get a bit older, it, it's hard to change. So we've got a primary school, and uh, we want you to know all about it in the days that follow. So here are our induction days. This is the first time we have run our induction afternoons in a row like this. And we thought we would try it because in previous years, sometimes people, week to week, were finding it. Hard, hard to hold into the so we found it hard to commit. So, these are the run of our three induction afternoons, and then on Thursday morning, we would like to invite you and your child to an achievement assembly in Oak Grove. Now, those of you who are established parents know about our achievement assemblies. It's essentially an opportunity once a month to open our doors and welcome families in so you can see what we've been doing in school and to celebrate in the achievements of our young people. On Thursday morning, we are going to in, make an infant achievement assembly. So your children will get a chance to practice being primary ones. And this year's primary ones are going to practice being primary twos, and the primary twos are going to practice being primary threes. So that's the kind of side. But we'd really like you to come along and um, your, your child at the end of this week's Pre-entry program will get presented in the certificate, so it'll be a nice opportunity for them to be part of it. So that's the plan this week, and as we go through the week, today's really a welcome. We'll talk about getting ready for school and <coughs> And on Wednesday, we have a representative from Cordia coming in to talk about the school lunches and how the school lunches and the breakfast club work, because that's the kind of thing we find that parents are very, very interested in. So, starting school, we're starting school on a Monday this year, Monday the 15th of August, and we will issue to you, you will welcome back with clip later on in the week, the, the times for starting. We'll all be coming in on the first day on a 9.30 start, so a little after the other children, there's children be coming in at 9, but on your first day, if you bring the primary ones in at 9.30, and it just gives us a chance to get that busy, busy, busy first, half an hour out the way so we can really focus on your children. 
And then for the next three weeks, the children will be in for half days only. So if you're a working parent, that's quite an important piece of information because you'll need to think about um, the child care on those afternoons. So mornings only for the first three weeks and Monday the 5th of September. That's them in school, full time. Forever. So that's it, that. yeah. And you can all sit back and have a moment. So it's, quite, it's a really exciting time, but it's also a time when families have anxieties because it's the, it's the child and they go to school and it's a big point of transition. And even if you've already got children in school, you can sometimes forget to think that's my baby or, you know, when it's, it's, a big, it's a big deal. And we do understand that. You know, so on the first day, you are so welcome to come into the class. You are so welcome to take photographs of your child settling down to the desk, hanging up and go, please do all that. But there will come a point when we say, thank you, and try to move you along. Because um, the kids the kids will uh, sometimes pick up any anxiety that you have. We find no problem with the children crying, but we find that it's the parents that we have to give the tissues to. They're the ones that are crying and upset. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be the same this year. Um, so we'll, we'll move you along, but you know, please, please don't be strangers if you're concerned. Catch us at the end of the day, talk to us. Um, and what we do do, um, because we appreciate that during these induction days, you get time with me and our management team, but you don't get a chance to talk to your child's teacher. And, you know, they're the, they're the really important people. Yeah, so once the children are in school, we'll give you the opportunity to have a one-to-one -one meeting with uh, your child's teacher, just to kind of settle in an appointment and you can talk about how the first couple of days and few days have been, any concerns, and anything at all. Just never relax. So just, just to kind of think about where school is and where it all fits in. Obviously, this is a Glasgow City Council school. I am part of the education department. But Glasgow is a very big city, so it's split into three parts, and administratively we fall into Glasgow North West. And within that, within the North West, we very, very, very much work in partnership with other public services, which include health, and also include social work from time to time. So we're very much part, we work with other agencies, and um, seamlessly actually, to ensure that your children are well, are healthy, are looked after, and they are also um, all set to thrive as best as they can. I always like to take this, this opportunity to talk about my role because um, many people think back to their own school experience and how they remember the head teacher can be, well, it can be positively. Sometimes people remember the head teacher and they think that it was the person that, you know, the yeah. children were sent to for a naughty. It's not really like that anymore. Um, but essentially, I, I am here for this school and for your children. And in doing that, I have a role where I work, work across different groups. Fundamentally, I'm a senior officer of the council. So I report to the council. I have to report to the council on figures for attendance, for achievement, and um, all, all sorts of um, monitoring questions. So I, I report to the council first and foremost. Um, but in being here for your pupils, I also have to work very closely with my staff, make sure that our staff have the correct training, make sure that they are up for the job, make sure that they're giving your children everything that they deserve, all the care, all the excite, exciting learning opportunities. I need to work with you because you are so important. You're, you're the big, big part here. All the, um, the first educators of the child is the family. So in working with you, we can ensure that a strong partnership, ensure that these people up here, these sweet people, get everything that they need to reach their full potential. Um, sometimes my work takes me out of the school. So sometimes if you phone up, you might not get me. And it's literally because I've had to go to another school to work for a day, for a half day, something like that. That kind of work is going to be things like recruitment or, or other exercises and opportunities. But sometimes I can be a little bit hard to find, but it's not because it's not going to be the reason. I will get back to you. If it's me, you need um, a phone call to the officer. I will get back to you. I know you can always contact me by email 
and emails sometimes give it easy because I can obviously answer emails into the email and so on. So just to tell you a wee bit about Oak Grove. Oak Grove, I think, is a very interesting school. I don't think there's another one like it. I really love it. We've always been really happy here at the time in school. We're a member of the Hillhead Learning Community. Um, and so Hillhead is our feeder high school. Um, and just at this point, just these few four days here, we've got primary sevens who are currently at high school and they're completing four days of their pre-entry programme. So they're, they're going um, up to high school and they're very, very strong lists between Hillhead not just in terms of transition, but also um, in terms of learning. We are good links with the departments in the high school, which ensures that we are um, teaching our children appropriately so we know that when they get to high school, they've got all the skills they need to, to flourish there. So it's a really, really good relationship we have between health and time. We have a rising school role. It's always been rising. I've never known it the other way. Every year I've started has been bigger than the last. And um, it does reflect at the minute the population is only increasing, but we are expecting a wee, a wee spike, so we expect that to continue. But one of the good things about um, the way the refurbishment has been designed, we have moved from an open plan setting to individual classrooms. <coughs> and it makes our capacity easier to describe because before when it was open, you know, it was hard to define how many children we could take. Now, because we'll have individual classrooms, our capacity as a school is, is very, very exact when it's completed. So we can't go growing and growing and growing and growing. We'll come to a point when we, we don't get any bigger, which is quite good news. <coughs> I think we could go to about, I think to about maybe just shy of 300, but that's no time soon. We have a really high a um, level of children who um, are bilingual, who, for whom English is an additional language. It's a real strength at the school. One of the things I love about our group is our international community. It gives a real vibrancy um, to the work we do here. I put 70 to 80% EEL, I know that's a quite a broad, a broad band, but the reason for that is um, we are seeing um, the, with the younger children, we have a higher proportion of children for whom English additional language than we do in the senior classes. Um, so in the upper school, for example, it's about 60-ish, whereas in primary one this last year, we had it's over 90, and then the kids are operating in two or more languages. Now of course we are, everything is taught in English, so even if your child is coming to school with, with a little bit of English, they will, they will learn very, very quickly because it is the medium in which we, we work. Um, but we do have an EAL teacher who can offer some targeted support in some classes where children are needing a wee bit of help with their English. But by and large, we find that when children come into primary one, the way primary one is structured, it's very broken down, um, very um, small steps in the teaching, lots of visuals. We find that really the kids come in at that stage flying away with, without really needing a lot of additional support on the learning. So, a lot of children who are going to grow up to be bilingual, which is an amazing advantage to have. We like to think of ourselves as a nurturing school. Now, we do have a nurturing. Um, which is an excellent resource which a school can offer um, to help some of our younger children who are finding it a bit difficult to settle in. They may spend a little bit of time being supported by our nurture staff. It is um, a resource that we use from time to time, but any child who would might be placed with the nurture room, it would be as a result of consultation with parents and very, very, very thorough particular assessments. So, um, it's a resource we have, but it's not one that we, you know, we, it, it's a very appropriate, targeted um, support resource. Um, we are very ambitious, and the next thing we're improving, we are always going for awards. And um, what are you going for just now, Miss Scott? Just got the School Sports Award uh -huh. and um, Stafford Amenity with people. Miss Scott is very, very, very keen on. Um, Sport and is doing an excellent job with the people. One of the things that she's pursuing just now is the Sports Scotland Award, which is 
a very, very um, high level we want to get. But other things that we have um, achieved over the years is we have um, a Scottish Education Award couple years ago. Um, we have at a national, national award level. And we're always looking at things that we can be recognised for and things that we can strive towards as well. Because we find that everybody is aiming high and, and trying to um, achieve great things, then it's a very worthwhile exercise as well. And we also like to take learning beyond the classroom. Um, you learn a lot in school, you learn a lot in class, but you can also learn a lot in the playground, in the park, in the community. And we do try and make sure that our children get out and about as much as we possibly can. Um, we're committed to going out to play at playtime, even if it's a wee bit rainy. So one of the things we'll talk about in the, the next couple of afternoons is making sure that kids have got good jackets and wellies and things because um, it's, it's so beneficial for the children to get active and to get lots of fresh air and we do feel that if the children have been out and been active in that way then they are far more focused when it comes to do some, some you know, work at the table with head and things and so um, that's, that's us. Now, attendance. This is, like I say, I, I am asked to report the attendance to the authority and I'm also, it, it goes hand in hand with national data on the school. You have to send the check, so it's the law, right? Now, the reason why I mentioned it at this point in moving between nursery and school is that nursery is not a statutory obligation. It's not the law sending the child to nursery. You don't have to do it. But when they come to school, that's not an option. Okay, so we need we need you to send the child to school. If your child isn't at school, we can't teach them. Okay, so it is no surprise that children, statistically, with very very good attendance, tend to be doing very very well. You know, so we would like to see kids in school. Of course they will be ill. Of course they will, because that's what happens. If your child, if you're not too sure about your child in the morning, if you're looking at them thinking, hmm, can't, can't decide, send them in. We will call you if your child is in the We will not let your child be ill, be suffering, look unwell. We'll send them home. So err on the side of send them to school and see what happens. It is amazing how they pick up in the morning. Um, so the, the other thing is we have, um, the school has, there's an absence monitoring line which you can access um, if your child doesn't turn up for school, we will mark them in the school register as being unauthorised absence until you get to us and tell us differently. So we will proceed as nobody knows where this child is unless we hear from you. So if, if we haven't heard from you, you will get automated texts from the school saying your child is at school. Yeah. And one of the reasons for that is it's really to safeguard children because older children who come to school by themselves, they set off in the morning. But if they don't get to school, how would their parents know where they were? So it's about safeguarding as well as you know, making sure that you know what's going on in, in your child, child's in life. Now, we do know that some of you, because um, perhaps you're studying um, overseas, or for very good reasons, you might need um, some extended leave to go overseas. And there are a whole variety of good reasons that we come across regularly in the school. We do need to know what's going on. Okay? If you are going overseas or if you're going to be away from school for a period of time, please let us know. And we need to, we need to see it in writing. It's not enough to kind of mention to a member of staff in passing in the playground. We need to see that in black and white so we can put it on the file so, so we know where you are. And part of the reason for that is, is that if families are going overseas for a long time, sometimes we have to remove that child's name from the school role because we're not allowed to put children on our role indefinitely. And especially just now when there are pressures for school places. You know, for example, in primary four just now, we are full of primary four. We are, we've been full of primary four for a while, and we have a, a waiting list at primary four. So, if something were to 
go off for six months without giving us the full information we might be deprived each other of place, you know, if we don't get the clear information. So please, please, please um, keep us up to speed on that. Um, it, it just makes our lives so much more easier. I might just say the same Okay, update about uniform. <coughs> this year we were um, hoping to have a look at um, slightly updating our school uniform. The colours um, in Oak Grove are the same. Um, we are looking at simple, you know, same white or blue, blue shirt and the same colour of navy sweatshirt. But what we are hoping to do is to get um, new school logo on onto the sweatshirt so that we can more colourful. Now this logo is important to us because it was actually designed by the children. And a few years ago we were looking at our school values and we were looking at what was important to us and we we asked the children to think about the logo and there was a few different ideas. But because we do so much work in local citizenship and looking at um, eco schools and learning for sustainability. One of the children um, drew something a bit like this and, and a graphic design that took it away and kind of made it look a little bit more together if you like. And we just felt that the the symbol of all the hands, the skin tones, holding the world, it just kind of sung to us, you know, this is this is our school, we're international. We care about each other. It's, you know, it, it just seemed to say what we wanted to express about our ethos visually. So we've been using that quite a lot in our um, documents and letters and stuff that go out from the school, but we hadn't really put it onto our um, uniform yet. And one of the reasons why this year we were looking at it, we've had such an extraordinary year in school this year. We've gone from being open plan to closed classrooms. We've moved and moved and moved again. It's been an extraordinary year. But see when we get to August, it's going to be like a new beginning for us. Over and above that, it's also the school's 40th birthday. So it's almost like a new school, it's 40 years, and we thought this was maybe the time to just grasp on it and maybe make a couple of wee changes. Now, the parent council have been really supportive of this and we asked them advice because we don't want to make any changes without considering what this means for you as families. Bearing in mind that I am very aware that you, some of you have older siblings at the school, so in making a change we don't want to make it expensive for anyone, we want to keep all that in mind. This is from Tesco's, right? So Tesco online, um, uh, we've approached them to look at the embroidery service. And this is what has, has recently come in, and it's a big polo shirt as well. And we really, really, really like it, but for the fact that there's something, if you get up close, there's something about the embroidery that just looks a little bit like, it's just not quite as beautiful in a couple of places, and I'm not quite sure if this is a, if this is because it's a sample, or if it's just really needing a little bit of work with the logo, and it's quite quick to change it. If we think that this is not quite good enough and, and this, you know, we'll have to look at the back and be really fussy, um, we might just, you know, not go with it, you know, we're just kind of like a bit swithering today. And instead of introducing it to the whole school, we thought we might just introduce it into primary one for next year and move through with it, you know, the, the logo. I can give you a definitive answer having spoken to Tesco at tomorrow's meeting. I hope that's okay because possibly some of you have come already to buy him going today. Um, and if you can just hold on to tomorrow so we've had another wee conversation about this logo because I don't want to go all the way down the road to something that's just not quite there. You know, it just doesn't seem quite right. So I want to speak to them, but I also think a little bit, I think.
hope to do this for tomorrow's afternoon, if that's okay. Can I, can I ask, what, what do you think? You like it? What's like? Okay. If we could, I mean, how do you do that? She'll see the school for the teacher. Good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are also going to do the Scott Cups this later in the week as well. We are also wanting to keep the PE uniform as a standard as well. We, we are finding with PE, children are good at wearing the uniform. When it comes to PE, especially in the upper school, some of the children are wanting to get a little bit fashionable. There's some very fashionable types that we get on PE outfits that I'm like, oh, where did you get them from? So we'll go with some PE outfits. So we thought we'd maybe try and simplify that because the last thing we want is for children to start, you know, oh, this is not, you know, you know how it can be. And the good thing about uniform is that everybody's the same, everybody's included, there is no difference, we've all got the same, you know, it's, it's a big part of either. So, I'm sorry this is a bit last minute, this, it, we've been trying to get going on this for a while, but it all seems to have um, had critical mass this morning, we've had enough answers to my questions to go ahead. So tomorrow, tomorrow we will have a definitive plan of action for this year. Um, but, like I say, test goes online. I know a number of schools that have used it, which is why we've gone there. There's a number of Glasgow schools that are on their supply chain, and um, you know, many of our families are going to test those anyway for the main body of the uniform, so the, um, you know, the trousers and the pinafores and so on, because it's quite, it, it is quite decent quality. What I'll do is I'll leave this out here and you can, you can have a wee look at it. I think that might almost be me. I'm going to have, yeah, oh, there's one more thing. Right, so, Mr. James, do you want to take a couple of Sure. We've been working hard to make this more uh, accessible to, to families and, and a bit more modern in the way that we communicate. So in addition to sometimes the records and bags, you can also keep up to date with what's happening in the school and contact us through um, Twitter. And we're um, at Oakville PRI for Primary. If you'd like to follow us, you'll be able to see what we're up to. We have a website um, which um, is just over a year old now, um, and hopefully very soon we'll have a mobile friendly version of that website as well. There are some children working on developing a mobile app that has a version of the website on it at the moment. Um, we also have a channel on YouTube and we've been adding more and more videos of our achievements and the things that we've been working on in school. Um, that's where we'll be posting today's presentation, so if there's anything that you're not sure about, you want to go back and have a look at that's going to be there tonight, tomorrow, um, and you can find that by searching for Oprah Primary School on um, YouTube. And if you subscribe to us, um, then you'll get updates on all of the videos that we post and be able to keep up to date with them as well. So, there's lots of good things going on. It's a very busy school, and um, sometimes it just seems crazy busy. <laughs> it just seems to be something going on all the time. But, um, but we have a lot of fun here. And we know that your child, your children will have a lot of fun, and that's so important. I don't think we talk about the education fun enough. It has to be fun. Children have to want to be here. They have to want to be part of us because only when they're happy and, and you know feel feel good about where they are in the school will be a really fabulous progress. And that's what we want ultimately. We want them to see the 